We are here at Spruce Creek Airport, and we're standing in front of an airplane that I've featured on my website for a little while. We're going to learn a lot more about it now from this man right here. I'm Dan Johnson, talking with Kyle Schluter. I'm the East Coast dealer. Nice and close. And I am um, located in Mansfield, Ohio. And so we service the East Coast, uh, Maine to Florida, and all the way over to Indiana. <laughs> They're doing all that in the Czech Republic. You're bringing them over here. They come to you in a container. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you put it together. The wings uh, use glider technology with the spars that connect. Okay, so uh, they, they interconnect with the ball and socket. They connect to each other. Okay. And there's one pin uh, that's concentric, and you rotate it 180 degrees, and it tightens everything up. We have to put on the horizontal stabilizer. Okay. Which is fitted on with a carbon fiber plate. And then, ah, okay. And then we put the elevators on. Okay. And the rudder too, I'm guessing then, huh? Correct. Okay. How long does it take you to put the airplane together? About three and a half hours oh. to do the wings and the tail section. Whole airplane, nose to tail is carbon fiber. Then. Carbon fiber, and then push rod controls for the ailerons. Okay. Uh, carbon fiber, push rods, same thing for the elevator. Uh, the only cables on the aircraft are for the rudder and the trim. And what engine do we have up front now, Kyle? This specific one is a Rotex 914, 115 horsepower. We also offer the 912 and the 915. Oh, okay. With 141 horsepower. Yeah, now, and that, I know uh, JMB guys are really making this airplane smoke with that powerful engine from Rotax. Definitely. But this one's no slouch either. So Kyle and I went up and flew this here. Oh, yeah. First, we uh, took off 5,500 RPM, 35 oh. inches. And we took off, we were seeing speeds, uh, climb, climb rate of. Uh, 1800. Yeah, 14 to 1800. I mean, yeah. just. So, this model has an electronic constant speed that you can adjust the prop RPM as an automatic and a manual mode. Okay. What kind of speeds were we seeing then? So, you wanted to go up. Tell me, tell me how high you wanted to go up and what we did and what kind of numbers we were seeing then, as best you recall. Yeah, there. yeah. What, we had uh, 6,500 feet and uh, we started out at a normal cruise setting, my normal setting of 5,100 RPM and 32 inches manifold pressure okay and we were doing 150 to 152 i believe yeah and um this is not and that's uh, that's that was a true, true number not true it's yeah. not true and the indicated as i recall was like 137 like that yes and that's 6500 feet so clearly yeah. your numbers are going to change when you go up to a high cruise but yeah. continue on please and then uh so on my way down here to florida i was at 12.5 and I was doing, at the same settings, 32 inches okay. and uh, 5,100, I was doing 158 to 160. <laughs> uh, and then even when we, then when we bumped up the numbers to 5,500 RPM and uh, 35 inches with you at 6,500 feet, we were seeing speeds of 160. Right, 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 160. And again, that's true, true, true airspeed. Max cruise, 5,500 RPM. Okay, top uh, of the line there. And 35 inches, you'll see seven gallons per hour. Okay. On a 914. And if you taper it back a little bit, you'll see six and a half to six. Okay. And now if you come back to that other number, that your, your usual cruise number, then what kind of burner are you seeing then? Uh, right around six. Okay. Yeah. All right, but you're doing, at six gallons an hour, you're doing 150, 150 60 knots, knots or and so. If, I go, if you go up higher, you'll see closer to 160. Yeah. So that's pretty darn efficient. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, controls in the airplane. Describe the controls that this airplane presents for its occupants, Kyle. Sure. Well, the, um, the rudder pedals are also a steerable nose wheel operated by push rods and very responsive for ground control. Dual, dual controls, right? Dual controls. Uh, even has co-pilot brakes. That's okay. an available option. And uh, push to talk on both sides, of course. Um, What's the biggest guys you fit in here, Kyle? Six foot seven. Six seven? Yes. Uh, so the <laughs> pedals are adjustable, have a wide range of adjustment, and then we can modify the seat height um, ah. and lower it two inches oh, can to you allow now? Okay. for taller customers. This one is a standard seat height, uh, but it is an XL seating position, which... What does that mean? The XL seating position is the angle of the bulkhead. So as opposed to being more upright, it's angled The back. actual bulkhead right, that runs right about here, huh? They yes. make that at a different angle, do they? Yes. Oh, interesting. They push it back and angle it a little bit more to give you more headroom. Oh, okay. I see. 
be your entry process? Uh, so I just start by grabbing right here to pull myself up yeah, onto the wing. this is a solid thing here, okay. okay. And then uh, as I get in, I put my hand on the bulkhead. I step in and I put my uh, back against the seat and then I change my hand position back down to the lower to the center console and I slide right in. Have you had older guys try this entry? Oh yes. Yep, and and they're not no problem for them to get in and out of it. Huh? No. It's a little bit of a step up here. If I was going to offer a complaint, I'd say, well, you know, for guys like me anyway, I wouldn't mind having a, a step of some kind down there. Tell me about how one of the things we went through that you would do with any person you take up and go, here's how the controls work. Kind of describe them for me, how they feel. Sure. First, I'll turn over the controls in a, uh, more of a cruise flight speed, and so they can feel how the plane maneuvers at a higher speed and feel how f the ailerons are quite firm at a higher speed. And which they is are, yeah. Great for cruise. Um, and uh, the pitch is always sensitive, which is uh, actually quite nice once you get used to it. It and is. It's a very small amount of motion there. And if you bump the stick and moved it, displaced it two or three inches, you'd be nosing over quite a bit. Quite a bit. And picking up speed quite fast, I found. <laughs> I was a little erratic in my pitch, but like you say, you're going to settle. Just don't do so much, and you're in good shape. I was just working it too hard. Yep. Is that common when you've taken other people up? Do they do that? It depends. Depends on the pilot, of course. Yeah. Some of us old ultralight guys like to wave the stick around a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then... Um, uh, then, then we typically slow it down to maneuvering speed, and which is what, 103 knots. 103, okay. 103. And then what do you do? Uh, Dutch rolls, steep turns, whatever, within reason. That That's where he wants to. All do. the stuff that I wanted to do, we got down to maneuvering <laughs> yeah. speed. Kyle was a little concerned that I was going to go wild on him, I think. But, but I just said, look, we want to be able to maneuver the airplane because that's what people do, and they make mistakes. So it's appropriate that I get up there, and I'm not quite as good at it as you. Well, I'm not nearly as good at it as you. And, but that's okay because I didn't run into any problems, and neither will the next guy so or the next person. It's very forgiving. Aircraft. Yeah. Now, okay, so we've been talking. It, it goes fast. It handles. Uh, it's, 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 it's sensitive in handling, I'll say. I, I don't find that problem, but... You'll definitely have to steady down for it a little bit. Uh, but then I went, okay, so it goes fast. I get that. Slow it down and show me what it does, I asked Kyle. Describe what you did to slow down, and then let's talk about how the controls felt then. Sure. So, yeah, we pulled the throttle back, kept the nose up, slowed her down to uh, 60 knots, and then we deployed the flaps to 15 degrees and held it at about 55 to 60 knots, did some light maneuvering, some slow turns, and uh, gave it uh, some some input to see how it reacted. Okay. And yeah. and how would you describe the difference between, let's say, roll at uh, maneuvering speed versus uh, roll at uh, cruise speed? How does, uh, how does it feel different to you? Um, just much more forgiving on the stick, a lot easier. It doesn't take as much muscle at maneuvering speed, of course. Okay. Now, finally, we, we came back in here to land, and I went, okay, this is my home field here. I've seen this site view a lot, and I went, we are definitely, it definitely feels high to me. We were, felt like we were pretty high on approach, and the runway kept getting closer and closer, and we're not coming down that much, and then pretty soon we're down in the runway right on the numbers. It was quite <laughs> beautiful how well the airplane slowed down. Walk me through your process on that last landing. When you set it up for landing, what did you do, Kyle? Sure. Well, the first step is to... Um, extend the gear at 80 knots. Um, the gear extension speed is only 80 knots because the gear doors are carbon fiber. They're made to be lightweight and they are not made to withstand high speeds. I so. see. Okay. So that's the first step is getting a plane slowed down to 80 knots, dumping the gear, and then letting more speed bleed off. Once you hit 67 knots, you can uh, extend the flaps which are split flaps 67 knots for flap extension okay. 67 knots so and the flaps are 15 degrees 37 degrees and 55 degrees <laughs> it looks like they're going to drag on the ground i mean they really go down low we did not use those because you don't need that too often right not very often but it is nice to have 
in the back pocket. So with their 33 degrees and, and powered back and all, I mean, here we are, what I thought looked high and it came down very nicely. At what speeds were you using? We were, it was gusty. So we were keeping it right about 60 knots. Okay. And if it was less gusty, you could take it down to 55. Okay. Which is pretty slow, guys. That's a, that's a pretty slow uh, approach in almost any airplane, much less one that can also run as fast as this. So it's an impressive range of performance in the VL3. Yes, definitely. I've asked you a lot of questions and I want to direct people to you now because they're going to have things that I forgot to ask or that is particular to them. Where do we send them on the web to find you folks? Over to uh, the website's alienaviation.com. Okay. And there we can get connected up with your business or the folks down in Wichita, which have the center of the country, or Adam on the West Coast. I'll find all of you through there? Correct. Okay, great. All right, well, good stuff. I've written about the VL3 in the past. We once knew this as the 800 XP Gobosh. This is not the same airplane anymore. It's actually changed quite a bit, but if it looks kind of familiar to you, that's probably why. So you can find out more about that directly from the guys there at VL3 and Allion Aviation, and you can find lots more about all forms of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for visiting with Kyle Schluter and myself here, and come and see them at Oshkosh.